In this video, we're going to look at using the decorator pattern with the repository pattern with Entity Framework Core and iMemory Cache. If that's not enough, I don't know what to tell you. My name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. Like I said in this video, we're going to be combining all of these different pieces to try and build upon the previous video, which if you haven't watched, you can find it right up here. And in that video, we were starting to transform a repository pattern wrapped around Entity Framework Core to start leveraging caching. As I've mentioned in the other videos that are part of the series, and if you haven't started looking at that playlist, you can check that out up here. Entity Framework Core does not necessarily need a repository around it, and a lot of people don't like doing it because it's just more levels of abstraction. But what we're going to look at in this video is building upon this pattern. We're going to look at using the decorator pattern, and that's because we encountered something sort of interesting in the last video when it came to putting caching in place. If that sounds interesting and maybe a little bit wordy, just a reminder to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. Now let's jump over to Visual Studio and we're going to start by reflecting on the previous repository pattern. Okay, in the previous video, we were putting together caching around this entity framework core repository, right? So if we were to just take a look at the get method here, what I was mentioning is that we end up having this block of code from line 31 to 34. That's really the core code that we had in the original repository. That's the part that's going to be using Entity Framework Core to try and get the record back from the database. Everything else around that is really just for the caching. And I was even saying we don't need this to set the ex expiration. It's really just an enhancement or something that you can tailor and tune with your repository. But now we're kind of left with the code that wraps this call, and that's essentially giving us the caching part. And again, just a reminder, this is with an iMemory cache, just the one that's built in to .NET for us. At this point, and if we start scrolling through the other methods, we start to see something pretty common. We basically have the exact same code copy-pasted from the other repository, and then a bit of caching logic, and then we have the exact same code copied from the other repository with a little bit of caching logic. This is a pattern that is something that we can pick up on, and what we're going to look at is not necessarily a solution that solves this problem all of the time, but I think it's a really good fit here, and that's going to be called the decorator. The decorator pattern is a design pattern. It's part of the big list of all the design patterns from the gang of four, so it's a pretty popular one. The repository pattern is itself included in there, but what the decorator allows us to do is essentially wrap things around another implementation, which sounds kind of interesting because it's wrapping kind of like a present. We're decorating this thing, right? So it looks different because we're wrapping stuff around it. But what we're going to do is create a decorator that performs the caching for us. And the benefit of doing that is that if we wanted a non-caching implementation, we could leave our original repository in its current format. So, for example, if I jump back to the Entity Framework Core repository, this is the one that did not have caching, right? If we look at this method for get, right, I said it's just a few lines of code and we were wrapping caching around this stuff. If we wanted to preserve this for a non-caching implementation, instead of copy-pasting all of that code over, because this part right here is literally just duplicated, what we can do instead is have a class that wraps the other one. So from the outside, it still just looks like an I repository. So just to call it out right up here, this is where we have our interface. So callers that are working with our repository are really just dealing with this interface. I'll jump over to it very briefly so you can see they have these methods to work with, right? So they don't know that just from the interface that it's a caching one or a non-caching one but you could go configure your application to say, you know what, all of the repositories or some subset of repositories that you're working with, I want these ones to be caching. So instead of copy pasting code around, you just wrap a caching repository around it. We're gonna go look at what that wrapper looks like, or we'll call it the decorator class, what that looks like, and I'm just calling it a caching repository. We're gonna look at this, and then we're going to see how we can set that up with dependency injection, which is yet another buzzword that I could have added into the intro of this video. Oops, too late, but let's go see how this works, right? So when we're dealing with a decorator like this, this caching repository, what we're going to do is take in the thing that we want to decorate or to wrap, and then we're going to, in this case, take in the cache that we want to work with. 
Now, like I said, in this video, we're just dealing with the memory cache. In subsequent videos that are part of this overall playlist, I'll be looking at different types of caches as well. But for now, just the memory cache. So here we have these things passed in and set as fields for us to work with. Now let's go see what these other methods look like, right? So if we go look at the get method, it's still going to have the caching part, right? But instead of copy pasting the lines of code inside of this factory method right here, it's just calling get async, right? This line of code that I have highlighted is essentially calling this, but on the other implementation. Let's skip over get all async. I've covered this in the previous video where I talked about you don't just want to blindly copy paste someone's implementation of get all async if you don't understand what it's going to be doing. Make sure you go back and watch that video to understand my point. If we go look here, we have the repository create async. Now the exercise we talked about in the previous video was how we wanted to work with our cache. And I talked about different things, right? So technically having a remove here on a create call doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you're creating something new there shouldn't be something in the cache. So that's not gonna be super helpful. We might take that out. If you want, you could leave it in. And if there was something in the cache with the same ID, you could make sure that it's being removed. So maybe you want to leave that in. But the other thing that we could consider, and this is really up to you, depending on your caching needs, is when we create we could also set it into the cache. If you have some type of system where when you create things, it's very, very likely that you'll have subsequent calls that go read these things back right away, then maybe adding it to the cache right away is helpful. But these are design decisions that you have to think about. And if you're thinking about how your decorator works, this is an option that you have. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it because we're not going to be adding things to the cache when we're creating or updating or deleting them. We're just going to be adding things to the cache when we're getting stuff back from the database. These are different options that you have to consider though. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. You have to decide for your setup. Before we move on, this is just a quick reminder that I do have a course on C-sharp refactoring available on Dome Train. Refactoring is one of the most critical skills that you can learn as a software engineer, and this helps you continue to build upon applications that already exist, making sure that they can scale and have extensibility. I walk you through a bunch of various techniques and give you some examples that we walk through together to see how we can apply these techniques to refactor the code. Check out the pinned comment and the links in the description to get this course. Now back to the video. Now, when we have update async, same idea here, right? So we can go ahead and say, hey, look, we're about to go update something in our database. Let's go make sure that it's removed from the cache first, right? You could do that if you would like. Instead of copying and pasting the lines of code for update async into here, we're just wrapping around another repository, right? So we just call the same method. It's like this part is the pass through from one repository to another, but we get to decide before or after how we want to work with the cache. Something else you could do is instead of having the remove up front, you could say instead, once I have updated the record, I would like to go update the cache. So you could go do that. But like I said above, I'm not gonna go add setting things to the cache when we're doing writes. I'm just going to have things get cleaned up or invalidated from the cache as we're writing. Getting things will add to the cache in the implementation that I'd like to use. Finally, deleting is very, very similar. We're not going to be adding anything to the cache because we're literally deleting things. So we're just gonna make sure that it's removed from the cache. Just like with all the other examples, it's just a pass through after that, right? So we're calling delete. We're gonna call delete on line 60 on the repository that we're wrapping. Instead of duplicating a whole bunch of code, this becomes a very, very thin wrapper class that we can use. And if we think about the responsibility that this has, the responsibility is just caching, right? Just being able to cache. It's not other logic that's added in. And I think that that's one way that we can clean this stuff up. But you do have to consider, right? Like, do you actually need this? Does it make more sense that in your situation, all of your repositories are caching? So you might as well have just built the other one that we just looked at. For you to decide, this is just a tool that you can add to your toolbox. But how do we go configure this? We've built it, so we built this wrapper that can go around another repository, which, by the way, is very generic, right? This has nothing specifically to do with Entity Framework Core. 
And if you think about that, the other videos in this playlist also talked about a Dapper repository. So this one could go ahead and wrap the Dapper repository as well, because it doesn't care at all about the implementation of the repository that it's taking in, right? It's just an I repository, not any framework core, not Dapper specific, and not any other implementation specific. So pretty cool. Again, how do we go set this up? How do we make it active in our application? So dependency injection is where this thing is going to come into play. If we go look up at the top here when we're dealing with our builder at the top of our application, this is where we're setting up dependency injection for different services. So we've added the memory cache on line five. Line four is where before we were setting up our entity framework core CRUD repository with caching. But we're going to go into here and instead of using this method, which was setting up the dependency injection right here on line 27, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to expand this one because we're going to use this for the dependency injection instead. So set up entity framework CRUD with cache decorator. The important part so uh, let me start with the non-important part. This part right here is the exact same as up here. So we don't have to pay special attention to setting up the database context factory. In this case, it's the same as before in the other videos. And if you're not familiar with that, like I said, you're already in part of the playlist. You can go ahead and check out the other videos. They cover this stuff way more in depth, at least enough to get you started in leveraging them. So this part is the same. Let's go ahead and collapse that part. Now, if we look at these lines here, this part is going to be different than this line right here. They have a similar responsibility, but this is where the difference comes in. On line 27, we were saying, I want to use a caching entity framework core repository. This is the first implementation with caching that we saw that basically duplicated the repository code and added caching in. And then we're saying, so use this when someone asks for this. We're no longer going to be calling this though. So if we look down below, what we're doing is we're saying we want to add a singleton and we want it to be the entity framework core repository. Notice that I am not mapping this to this type here. If someone wants this, they have to ask for it by this type. Hopefully that makes sense so far because you're going to see if you pay close attention on line 37 where the highlight is right here, you'll notice that on line 40, the highlight is the same. So I'm just gonna highlight with my cursor, this part's the same. And what we're doing is we're asking the provider, which is where all of our services are registered, we're saying we want specifically this entity framework core repository of type entity. That means just to make it a little bit more clear that having this line here on line 37 allows us to specifically ask for this implementation. But why are we even asking for this one? Well, that's because we are basically saying if anyone wants this interface, so if anyone's asking for the generic I repository, we're going to say you're going to use a caching repository implementation. The caching repository is our decorator. It's just the thing that's going to wrap around the other repository. So we'll make a new one. We will wrap it around this one. And we also need the memory cache. Just to make that a little bit more succinct, I'll iterate the last part one more time. This part down here allows us to go add a decorator and that decorator will wrap around this particular repository implementation. And that means that we need to have that specific repository implementation available to us on the dependency container. If we go back into program.cs and I say set up with the cache decorator now, right? If I have this in place, if we look at our CRUD methods, and I add this disclaimer into every video, this is not how you would go write your CRUD methods. These are all get methods in a minimal API. This is just so I could be showing people in the videos through the browser. But what we're able to do here is we ask for an I repository, right? See the highlight on all of these methods now? If you were to guess at what implementation of the repository is coming back, I'll give you a moment to think about this. And I think you're right, it's going to be the caching one, right? That's the one that will get resolved. And inside of the caching one, we are wrapping or decorating the entity framework core one that we started with. 
But if you don't believe me, let's go ahead and run this. I'm not going to go exercise all of the crud methods because if you've watched the other videos, you've probably seen this about 400 times now. Let me put a breakpoint on the get method. We're going to run this and then we're just going to go inspect what repository is when we run this. Okay, with the application running, if I go ahead and press enter now, we should hit this breakpoint. And if we hover over this repository, which might be a little bit hard to see, so we'll check it out in the locals part down below, you can see the type of this repository when the editor zooms in is going to be a caching repository. If we expand that caching repository, we can see that it took in the memory cache and it also took in this EF core repository, right? This type that you see right here is this type over here. If I jump into it, this is the non-caching implementation. So we have the caching one wrapping around the non-caching one. And this allows us to have a decorator. You might be asking yourself at this point, what's the whole reason for doing this? Well, one of the main reasons is that we could go ahead and essentially reduce code duplication. So that's one nice part. But we also decoupled these things, right? Because the first one that I showed you that had the caching in place, we had to go duplicate ND framework core and combine it with caching logic. But I did drop a little bit of a hint that from the previous videos, we looked at a dapper repository. So if I wanted to go follow that first pattern and add caching to the dapper repository, I'd basically have to copy and paste the dapper repository, add the caching in, and it's really now like a handful of classes, but really I could have just had the same caching logic and not cared about which other repository I'm working with. Your situation may call for something very different. So just as an example, you might say I have some other implementation of a repository and I definitely need to deal with my caching in a different way. Then using the decorator is probably not a good approach for you. And that's because the way that you are caching or the way that you are decorating things is going to be consistent. If you need different behavior across those things, then either your decorator needs to be configured differently or you need to have a different decorator or you just go change that other class. So this is one type of approach that you can use if you have this challenge. And I think that it's an interesting one, especially if you have the need for reusability and separate these things in a way that gives you some more simplified classes instead of some bunched up logic. That's a quick look at how you can use a decorator for caching stuff with a repository, with Entity Framework Core. But now that you've seen it, if you watch the other videos, you know that you can just swap out the repository with the dapper one. And if you've already built your own, you could swap it out for that too. So if that was interesting and you want to see more about caching, this video next will start talking about hybrid cache. I'll see you in the next video.